Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Praise the Lord. And thank God for our ladies this morning. Amen. And I guess uh, I'm going to share something very simple this morning. But first, uh, I'm excited about the one that Linda is back because she was not feeling good. But also there was a situation in her family, if you remember some time ago, her nephew had an accident, a horrific accident in Sacramento. So he was in the hospital. And a week ago on Sunday he passed. So uh, we just need to pray for the family. And uh, he's a young guy. He had a girlfriend like this. And uh, what was his name? Brad. Brad. We we'll just take a moment and just pray that uh, my sister will have enough strength when she deals with the family, but also that uh, the Lord as a good shepherd would just overshadow the family. And uh, we don't understand, but you do understand what the younger ones are going. So we just uh, take a moment. Let's let's take a moment. Father, when one cries, we all cry. When one rejoices, uh, we all rejoice. And this morning, our hearts are going toward our sister, my Lord, and uh, we just ask your blessing right now about the whole family, my Lord, because uh, you're a good shepherd. Uh, you take us into your arms and just bless us, my Lord. Uh, I pray your anointing upon that family, my Lord, and even through this uh, sorrow, my Lord, you'll be able to bring them one by one towards you, my Lord. Uh, and you tell us that when we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. Uh, so I pray that you will bless my sister and uh, give her right words to share as she speaks with her family, my Lord. Uh, and just, uh, we thank you, my Lord, that uh, all things work for good to those that believe you. And we believe you this morning. So even in those moments, my Lord, uh, we just simply rejoice and uh, say you are in total control of our lives. Uh, and we also thank you for uh, our brothers and sisters who are struggling right now and some are feeling a little bit better, my Lord, but we just pray especially for Dale and his family, my Lord. Uh, and we think about uh, Brother Michael, my Lord, and uh, his life and the ministry in this church, my Lord. Uh, and we pray for his family. Yes. And if that's your will, that you will allow us to gather together here down the road uh, to just uh, take a few moments and celebrate his life. Let your will be accomplished, we pray right now. And now we put everything aside, my Lord, and we just focus on you. You are the center of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It's good to pray one for another, but it's good to rejoice in his name. Amen. amen. As long as we are here and we breathe, we rejoice in him. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Two are better than one. Somebody get excited. Right <laughs> It's good to have two, it's good to have three, but something happens. Do you know that even God is plural? God is love. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's the third mystery, three in one, one in three, which is different subject, but I'm just bringing this one idea, the idea together. And that's basically the word that I want to mention this morning, together. Something happens when we are together. Amen. It's just exciting to know that we are together. Just the other day, we were excited on Wednesday because there were brothers. And we said, wow, what a congregation just to see brothers like this. Of course, one sister show up, so she was the star. But uh, brothers get together. But together. Something incredible when we are together. Almost feels like turn around and wave at somebody because you're not by yourself. I know there's few of us, but there are few. So it's not you by yourself. We are together. Are you hearing me? Right. We are together. And we just rejoice in his presence. Uh, you all remember the story right after when uh, Jesus was resurrected and uh, there was a bit of confusion uh, with his disciples. And uh, at one point, the Gospel of John says that, John, that Peter decided to go fish. You remember that story? But I don't want to talk about the story and all the fish, 153. It's very interesting too. And every time we have uh, interesting stories in the gospel, but here we even have the exact number, how many fish. So can you imagine? Nice size, big size, small size, uh, uh, darker, lighter. How about that? All kinds of fish, 153 fish. You know something? But the most important thing in that story is 
right there, that's chapter one, 21 huh? and uh, verse 3, when it says, Peter is looking at his other friends and he says, I'm going out to fish, he tells them. And they said, we will go with you. And I want you to understand this right now. We will go with you. We'll go with you. Go. We will go with you. And it. So it was very interesting because as they went together, this particular mission was too successful, but they were together. Peter was not by himself. He was with the other friends. He was together. What I'm trying to say this morning, my brothers and sisters, is that, that for us as believers, there are no Lone Rangers. Are you hearing me? In Christianity, born again believers, there are no Lone Rangers. The government and the society is trying to help us in this aspect right now and keep us away from the church, keep us away from the fellowship and the assembly of saints that Jesus never issued a statement that, and he tells us to be by ourselves. It's always plural. He gave us the great commission and he tells us not to be in isolation, but to go. You go together. And you must quote the scripture in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28. Therefore go and make disciples. He tells you and me together. We are together. There might be few of us this morning, but we are together. There's not just one of you, but we are together. You remember the ladies that came to the empty tomb? Uh, they came together. One, two, three, they all came together. And they were sent to let the disciples know the good news that Jesus is alive. And they were sent together. Go and tell them that Jesus is alive. Together. You remember the disciples after the resurrection, their encounter with Jesus was together. Together they saw Jesus. Together they heard him speak. Together when Jesus was giving instructions uh, and when he called them even from the very beginning uh, of his ministry it was always together. They were together. There's no walk with Christ by yourself. We are together and when one sister cries we said we all cry and when one rejoices we all rejoice this morning amen? amen so we are rejoicing we are still here the light is all god is in control hallelujah there's still power in the name of jesus he heals it he saves it and he redeems his people hallelujah yes. When I think about those forefathers and the leaders, uh, and when we said, oh my gosh, my father would be 94, but praise God, this is generation right now, and God is moving in the midst of us, to the right, to the left, does not change. Uh, are you still with me? The church waited for the Holy Spirit, and they were together. The scripture says in the book of Acts, they gathered together in the upper room and they were waiting. They were waiting for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. How? Together. Together. Oh, they received the power from heaven. The Holy Spirit came upon them. How? Together. They were all together. Glory to His name. Uh, from the very beginning uh, to the very end, uh, our mission uh, requires unity and a teamwork. There is no Lone Ranger set in Christianity. Somebody say amen. amen. Our nature, our nature as Christians, our nature as believers, 
Our Christian call is to share and we share in common the same thing. And what is that thing? To go. When you read the pages of New Testament, the words go, tell others, it just jumps out of all the pages in New Testament. Paul, a great missionary, he traveled and worked how? With teams. When you study carefully about his mission trips, he's always surrounded by others. He is always together, someone get excited, together with another people. Uh, many of his epistles, uh, letters that we read, the Word of God today uh, was out for, written uh, as a team, uh, with the team passion. Uh, most of the time he didn't even write himself uh, because he had eye issue <coughs> about that, and there were others to help him. Uh, for instance, Paul uh, and, and Sostenes uh, collaborated on 1 Corinthians. Uh, and then Paul and Silas and Timothy are named as authors of the 1 Thessalonians. Uh, so there's all kinds of examples uh, in the scripture as the first believers were how? Together. Together, together, the church received uh, our marching orders uh, for this season right now, together, and largely they obey the words of the Lord together. Hallelujah! We are a happy people because we are not lone rangers, uh, but we are together. Yes. We are together, one with another. Glory to His name. Uh, well, it seems like the teamwork uh, dominates uh, in New Testament. It seems that like togetherness uh, is the ideal uh, for Christians uh, in our world. Uh, but sometimes uh, this reality falls uh, short of the ideal. Uh, what do I mean? Well, sometimes we have personality conflicts. Uh, sometimes uh, we have things uh, in our walk that we struggle. Sometimes we have moments, let's say you are in a, you are a missionary and going somewhere, that sometimes even your own other colleagues uh, are becoming a, a struggle for you. We talk with many of those missionaries. Uh, sometimes God is gonna call you and me to an area where you are so isolated from other believers uh, and you are ministering, we have some of those uh, who are outside of Moscow and dealing with uh, with uh, Muslims and uh, now they're in, in one of the other republics there where they are very difficult to find other believers uh, as well, but yet they are fulfilling the mission that God has put up on their hearts. Uh, but I'm saying that yes, there are moments in our lives uh, for whatever reason that we have a hard time uh, to have a team uh, together with us. Uh, Paul and Barnabas said, uh, you remember that they were ministering together uh, and there came a moment uh, when uh, their partnership uh, but got some disagreement uh, about uh, another brother, Joe Mark. And you remember they had to split for a moment and they were different direction. One went to the right, and one went to the left. But they still preach the good news. Are you still with me? Amen. But there are those moments in our lives uh, that sometimes uh, even the word obedience uh, in our everyday walk sometimes will separate us from other believers. Uh. And we mentioned Paul, uh, and even Paul had a moment right before he lost his life uh, when he's writing uh, before his execution uh, by the hands of the Nero, and he writes in 2 Timothy and chapter 4 and verse 16, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16. Listen what he writes. He says, at my first defense, uh, no one came to my support. 
Who are we talking about? We're talking about Apostle Paul. Apostle of New Testament is written by him. But that's what he states, that in that moment, no one came up to my support, but everyone deserted me. But glory to Jesus, he does not end there. Because right away, full of the power and full of the Holy Spirit, that he gives us another verse right after that. So now, even when, when Paul writes about his labor, and then he comes uh, to that moment right now, uh, and, uh, and he finds himself alone, so to speak. For a moment, he is alone right now. Uh, Though he feels and writes even, he says, I feel deserted by everyone in the same breath. He concludes by saying, that's the next verse, verse 17, but the Lord, hallelujah, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles uh, by hearing. Hallelujah! Even in those moments when you think uh, that you are away from the team, uh, that you cannot use the word together, God is still with you and God gives you strength uh, and your life becomes a testimony for His glory. Hallelujah! Yeah. Even in those moments uh, when Paul remained uh, kind of aware of being a co-worker. I'm not by myself. God is by my side. God is with me in my labor. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are never Lord Rangers. Can someone say amen? amen. In Christianity, there is no such a thing uh, like a Lord Ranger. We can all quote the Great Commission. I said this few minutes ago. Uh, we all know what God is reminding us to do. But then when we say, Oh my mind, go and make disciples of all nations. Uh, and we remember the words baptizing them uh, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and we kind of, uh, and we forget the latter part of this commission. We call it the Great Commission uh, because he says and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you and we kind of stop right there. Forget what Jesus is saying and surely wow I am with you always to the very end of the age. Uh, I'm always with you. I look into the Greek. He basically says wow look Look, one translation says, pay attention. Jesus is trying to underline something and he says, wait a minute, what I want you to know right now, I am with you always, hallelujah. Yeah. This morning in a moment, we're just gonna go to our lives and <clears throat> tackle a new week right now in the name of Jesus. But what does he want us to remember? That you are never alone, yeah. that we are together. And at the same time, he reminds you, and he reminds me, Jesus, come on, the Lord, our Savior, he's telling us, I am with you, hallelujah. And that takes me all the way back to the birth of Jesus. And we celebrated not too long ago, our Christmas time, and remember there, when God sent a messenger, and God reminded them, <coughs> oh, excuse me, <coughs> I get too excited. Praise God. I see 1,000 plus. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to his name. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. How about that? Right. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. God with us. God with us. So here we are. Right from the very beginning. God with us. A little bit later on, it reminds me the words of Jesus himself uh, when he prophetically was speaking about you and me today. He was speaking about the church. Uh, and in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 18, uh, he says those famous words uh, that we always remember and remind ourselves. Where two or three, what? Gather in my name, there what? I am with them 
I am with them. Hallelujah. Jesus is here. Jesus is with us. Jesus is on your side. You are never alone. Together. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Uh, remember the word. Together. As we leave this place. As we get excited right now. In a moment when you are facing the reality of life. Uh, I want you to remember. You are together. We are together. You are not by yourself. Uh, and God is with us. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, he says himself, uh, and by my mind, uh, when he talks about the birth, uh, when he talks about the life, uh, when he talks about the death, when he talks about the resurrection, uh, there is always that underlying theme uh, for you and for me today. I am with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is with me from the beginning to the end. Uh, Jesus is always on our side. Uh, he never leaves us. You are never, there's no hour, no day that you suddenly by yourself. God is with us. Jesus is with us right now. And that's the underlining mission of the church. It's not the building. Uh, it's not the name in the front of the building. Uh, it's not the pews. It's not the walls. Uh, you are the church. Hallelujah. If we have the mission, a mission doesn't change as we go, as we tell, together. Jesus reminds us, I am with you. Hallelujah. So when I say this morning uh, that he is with us, so here we are going together. We are going together, my brother. We are going together, my sister. So when we are going together, the first thing you have to understand uh, that we are going with God. Yes. Amen. So when you are going together, it's not just your spouse, it's not just your kiddo. When we are going together, we are going with God. Hallelujah. Yes. My God is with me every hour of the day. Glory to His name. Yes. So when we go, when we are together, we are going, we are going with God. And that's the incredible thing that what is a little bit later after that phrase. And I don't want to deal this morning about theology. I don't want to deal this morning the depth and the importance of that whole phrase. What he says, surely I am with you always. How? To the very end of the age. Pages are written, doctorates are being given uh, because of this last sentence right now, to the end of this age. But I want you to understand that as we go together, as we go with God together, Jesus is defining uh, the limits of our mission uh, with those words. <coughs> he says, to the very end of the age. And I look at that word, the end. And in Greek, that word always refers and always speaks about the second coming of Jesus. So when the Lord says, when I'm talking right now, you should go, you should tell to the very end of the age what he is saying till I come again. What he is saying when the second coming of Jesus, when I'm returning back. Wow, very explicit right now. Because at that day when he's coming back, uh, when he's going to gather his church, uh, he's also going to judge the world. Uh, and I want you to hear this right now. Because it is Jesus. And Jesus is stressing uh, the link uh, between the mission of the church uh, and his return. Now we go together. Now what we are doing, we are working together. Now we need one another. We pray one for another. Again, we rejoice one with another. We cry one with another. But we are together, together with God. Together with God. And then we have a timing there, uh, and our mission uh, stops uh, at his return. You see this? So here is Jesus coming again. 
no more as a tiny baby in Bethlehem, but now as a king of kings and the Lord of lords, and every eye shall see him. Hallelujah. Amen. What a computer, what a day, what a moment. Think of that. We are becoming so high tech right now, but can you imagine right now? Every eye shall see him coming on the clouds. Glory to his name. But, but sometimes uh, we just start to think about that. Look at this. When he comes, uh, there is a stop for repentance. That's it. From that point on, there's no need to go. There's no need to share the good news. It's done. It's over. Are you still with me? When he comes back, there's no time to kneel down. There's no time to ask for forgiveness. There's no time. It's over. It's done. He is coming back. Hallelujah. Amen. But now we are together. But now we need to understand that we are together with God. And as we say this, there's one more point that, and then we'll pray together. What I'm saying, because when we are going, when we are going together, when we are going together with God, there is uh, the agenda, and the agenda is not yours. It's not mine. When we have a board meeting, we always have an agenda. Everybody is excited. Oh no, one, two, three, four, five, six, and sometimes it's the seven. Usually when we get to the seven point, they are very excited because it says enjoyment. So we are just going home. I will say happy Easter or now happy Valentine's. Everybody is excited. We are already finished. But you see what is saying here? And he gives us his agenda. It was so foolish for you and for me to think without categories right now. And we are talking about the body of Christ. We are talking about the church. We are talking about the body that is alive right now. Because when we start thinking that, when we start thinking about going that with our perspective, even when we are going not by ourselves, but also with others, suddenly the success is going to be comparing to the world. Are you still with me? And that's foolish. Now suddenly we are just taking the stuff from the world and we are looking at each other with those glasses right now. Oh, we accomplished that, we did this, we did that, and there's no result. And we saw this even in the first moment when we read the scripture this morning, when Peter says, I'm going, and they said, we will go with you. And what a mission it was, because they had, what, zero at the end of that mission. They had zero. So when we start thinking with that, I'm going, but only I'm comparing myself to the world is my agenda. It's what we can accomplish right now. Wow, wow, how foolish it is in our life. Sometimes we are deluding ourselves into thinking that our purpose rests in the building. How many people today in China but I heard about Pakistan right now. There's exploding of Christianity right now. Born again believers, and they're meeting in the houses. They're praising God together. Wow! You see, it's not the building that. It's not to build a mega church. We get so excited when I drive for them on I-5 on, on, on 50 in uh, Sacramento, and here I say, I see. Uh, Christian Center, I say Capital Christian Center, right from the freeway like this, all the signs and all the, I get excited, I say, wow, praise God, here is a born again built, and God said, I mean, filled with the Holy Spirit, a church, but it's not the building, it's not the signs, that's not what God called us to do. And sometimes we think if I build a mega church, wow, I received it. God is here with us today. God is telling you and me that we are together. Somebody get inside yes. together, yes. together with God. So here we are. You see, it cannot be compared to the standards of the world. When I'm talking about what we have today, twists and turns, we have all kinds of societies right now. When we have persecution, we have freedom. 
where we have some of those who are sympathizers to us, sometimes uh, there's a poverty of riches and you cannot compare one with another like this. All of this is irrelevant, doesn't matter. Are you hearing me? It does not matter right now. Everything is coming and everything is pointing toward one thing and that is his coming. Amen. That's what counts. It is his agenda. It's all about Jesus. I mean, some of us got excited. Some of the pastors were testifying on a beautiful uh, week with me. I had to sit on the presbytery meeting and listen to all kinds of uh, testimonies and stories all across <coughs> Northern uh, California and Nevada. What God is doing, God is doing some incredible things in the midst of us. But it's interesting to know that somebody on the other side of Sacramento can preach and sometimes they're online, but yet people in the Bay Area are listening to them. How about that? Isn't that beautiful? What God is doing right now, you can use even high tech to make sure that we are together. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. And I have some testimonies there as well. But all of that, is pointing toward one thing. Will we belong to him on that day? So in a moment, like I said, we're gonna finish. But when he's coming back, again, let me read the whole phrase together. And surely I am with you always, how? To the very end of the age. And when he says this, he's coming to but he's returned. That's going to be the end. So when Jesus is coming back, maybe next hour, maybe tomorrow, like this, are you going to be there? Will the nations, groups, tribes belong to him on that day because of your and my obedience? Whew. You have to put that yet. This is your daily testimony that brings the good news to others, to our neighbors. Are you still with me? That's it. Amen. Or will you just present the key? Oh Lord, here it is, and I'm just, uh, I just had that one talent that I, I dig under, and uh, I was afraid. I didn't know what to do. And here are those crumbling kingdoms of this earth. Are we going with him? That's my heart this morning. Or we are going by ourselves. Are you going around Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Are you going together? You know that he's with us together. Together one with another and together with God. Or you're by yourself. I want to take a moment. I want you to, to just stand before him and say, oh God. Sometimes we have excuses and we say, but I'm shy. I, I, I don't know what to do. But I'm saying, oh God, take my shyness right now and use it for your glory this week. Amen. Lord Jesus, can you make me a minister of the gospel? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is simple things, and I give you sometimes basic examples. You just open the door for somebody at the groceries. You just look at them, you smile at the counter. Some of many people are so angry right now, like that. But you have something in you, because it is God with you. And God is saying it is his agenda. You say, Pastor, I hate my job. I know, but you are there. And someone around there needs to see you and your walk. With God. Amen. Are you still with me? Yes. Uh, can we just say in simplicity, Lord Jesus, fill me with your strength. Hallelujah. I just want to be fully in your hands. And I want to make sure that your kingdom, that your mission is moving forward till the day of your return. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus is coming back, but we still go. And when you go, when you share, when you tell, remember you are not by yourself. What's the word for today? Together. What's the word for today? Together. I want us to take a moment right now, all of us. 
I don't want you to ask anything of the other person. I just want you to come as you are and take a moment and I'll be out for right now. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I need you right now. I want to go together. I want to understand.